Welcome everyone, I'm your host Coach Janine and in this episode we are going to be talking about the five do's and don'ts in preparing your resume for civilian jobs when you have a military background. And yes, there are some things you're gonna, you are going to want to do. And I'm going to just start off with, there's no other way to say it, but you know, a lot of what I see on resumes, you, you don't put it on there. It does not need to be on there. And I know you're very proud of every MCI, every military course you've ever taken, but if they don't actually address something in the job announcement or highlight how you can bring a benefit to the employer specifically, don't put it on there. They don't want a six-page resume full of things they, they don't understand. And that's what it really comes down to. If they can't understand what you did, they don't know the value you bring or why they should hire you. So leave a lot of that stuff off. Now I'm going to be going through five do's and five don'ts. And if, as always, you can download these episodes so you don't need to take a lot of notes, but you will want to kind of look at your resumes as you're going through these. Number one, research the company. Research the company to see if, if it publicly identifies with being a military friendly or a military hiring, veteran hiring type company. A lot of times you will see it in the left margin, a little, there'll be either a line that says something about veteran hiring, veteran job seekers, or on the bottom it might ha of the page, you'll have to scroll down below the fold and you'll see something identifying. If you see a logo or identifier that, that the company hires military, you'll have some flexibility in preparing your resume because they, they're going to know what, what to expect. Now some of the companies will even have a page, and I want to say it's CS, CSX, the railroad company. You click on their page for veterans and it will ask you to put your MOS, your job specialty, and it will give you a chart of okay you did these things in the military this is what you're qualified to do for us. It actually helps you translate the skills what you've done to what will work for them and I've only seen it with a few jobs. You don't want to research the hiring manager and this is very important because if the hiring manager has a military background he or she will probably understand the lingo that you put in your resume, but if it's a civilian person with no military background, you may lose them. They may not understand acronyms. Number three, convert your military experiences to civilian language. You must write each resume for each job. No Brain and praying with one generic. I, I just cringe when I still get that. I just need a generic. There is no such thing as generic resumes, people. You have to know how to convert. If you were, you know, an admin chief in the Marine Corps, how does that relate? Is it an executive assistant, administrative assistant? Make sure you're using the correct terms from the job announcement. If it's looking for a heavy equipment mechanic or a diesel mechanic, be very specific. Number three, convert your military experiences to civilian language. You must write each resume for each job. No spraying and praying with one generic. I, I just cringe when I still get that. I just need a generic. There is no such thing as generic resumes, people. You have to know how to convert. If you were, you know, an admin chief in the Marine Corps, how does that relate? Is it an executive assistant, administrative assistant? Make sure you're using the correct terms from the job announcement. If it's looking for a heavy equipment mechanic or a diesel mechanic, 
be very specific. Number four, keep it relevant. Again, the person reading your resume is only interested in the skills you have that pertain to the job you're applying. Don't list everything you ever did. Don't list every military school, correspondence course. Keep it relevant. Number five, please use spell check. Use spell check. Comes on every computer. Also have somebody else read your resume. Let it sit for a day or two. If you've been working on a government resume for like USA Jobs that needs KSAs, I'm going to tell you by after about four or five hours you're ready to throw your computer through the, through the wall and you're reading what you want it to say. So always get a fresh set of eyes. Again, I've done, talked about this in past episodes. I love using Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R dot com. Have somebody proofread your resume, $5. It's the best $5 you'll ever spend. Now let's get into the don'ts. Number one, don't lie, mislead, or embellish. I see this a lot of times. People say, well, yeah, I, can, I think I can do that. Put it down. No, be honest about your skills. And, and I use the example here. An admin person in the military often knows nothing about civilian HR, so don't say you're an HR specialist. Unless you've gone to college and you have background in HR, you are not an HR specialist leaving basic admin for the military. Keep it real. So again, it goes back to knowing how your skills translate. I often get people saying, I'll, I'll ask, what, are you, what is your expertise? I'm good at leading people. Well, leading morning PT or supervising field day is not going to get you that executive level management. Again, be realistic about where you can expect to start in the civilian world. Number four, don't put your rank, the fact you retired, combat tours, or awards on your resume. These can cause someone to judge you based on age, skill set, maybe that you have possible disability, or what you expect to earn. Avoid being stereotyped. The only time I recommend this is if they are military friendly and they're asking for someone with military background. Then say military veteran. But don't say you're retired. Unless again you really know that's what they're looking for. Number four, don't put your rank, the fact you retired, combat tours, or awards on your resume. These can cause someone to judge you based on age, skill set, maybe that you have possible disability, or what you expect to earn. Avoid being stereotyped. The only time I recommend this is if they are military friendly and they're asking for someone with military background. Then say military veteran. But don't say you're retired. Unless, again, you really know that's what they're looking for. Number four, don't put your rank, the fact you retired, combat tours, or awards on your resume. These can cause someone to judge you based on age, skill set, maybe that you have possible disability, or what you expect to earn. Avoid being stereotyped. The only time I recommend this is if they are military friendly and they're asking for someone with military background. Then say military veteran. But don't say you're retired, unless again you really know that's what they're looking for. Number four, don't put your rank, the fact you retired, combat tours, or awards on your resume. These can cause someone to judge you based on age, skill set, maybe that you have possible disability, or what you expect to earn. Avoid being stereotyped. The only time I recommend this is if they are military friendly and they're asking for someone with military background. Then say military veteran. But don't say you're retired unless again you really know that's what they're looking for. Do not provide your social security number, date of birth, merit, or mar marital status on a resume. Again, don't want to be discriminated against. I don't know where putting social security number became popular. A couple years ago, I used to see several people putting the social security number on the resume. Don't do it. Protect your identity. Now, as you're uploading your resume, you may be asked to supply your social security number, but you're going to know if you're in one of those 
field that requires a background check. The one resume fits all, no. There is no such thing as a one resume fits all or generic resume. They don't exist. You will end up having several resumes you will tailor for various type jobs. Get used to having several. So again, research the company, research the hiring manager, know how your skills translate, and follow my tips on what not to include when you have a, and then you will have a resume that will get you hired. Thank you for reviewing this presentation. If you've enjoyed it, please share and connect with me online. Would love to hear feedback on what you would like me to talk about next or teach you. Have an amazing day and we'll be back soon.